Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthete. Previously I've been telling the story of Mount Talbot, a fine Palladian mansion in County Roscommon. After it was built in the 1730s, its then owner, William Talbot, carried out alterations to the central block of the building, transforming it into a hybrid Gothic castle. William Talbot had no children of his own, so he left the estate to his nephew, John Talbot Crosby. John could enjoy a lifetime's occupancy of the property, but if it was to remain in his branch of the family, he had to have a son. After his uncle's death in 1851, John, who by royal license dropped Crosby from his surname, came to live at Mount Talbot with his wife Marianne and the couple's daughter, but there was no son. The following year, John Talbot claimed to have discovered his wife with a groom called Mullen in the latter's room in the stables. The door into the room, he said, was locked, although curiously enough, the couple's little daughter was inside it with her mother and the groom. Nevertheless, and despite her pleas of innocence, Marianne Talbot was immediately separated from her child and imprisoned overnight in the house. The following day, she was taken by the local rector to Dublin and there kept in confinement. It's said that Mullen followed Marianne to the city and tried to see her, but was not allowed to do so. Sometime later, Marianne was declared insane, brought to England and placed in an asylum where it seems she spent the rest of her life. Meanwhile, her husband had initiated divorce proceedings on the grounds of her adultery with the groom. Although his application was granted in the court, it was repeatedly challenged by Marianne's family and the case was taken up by a Liberal MP, John George Fillimore. Eventually, it had to go all the way to the House of Lords, where the couple's divorce was finally confirmed in July 1856. As can be imagined, the case attracted considerable publicity, and it was widely thought that John Talbot had fabricated the notion of his wife's adultery with a groom because he knew she couldn't have any more children, and certainly not a son, and by the terms of his uncle's will, he had to have a boy if the estate were to be secured for his side of the family. Having finally succeeded in his ambition, John Talbot was able to marry again, which he did in October 1858, his new wife being Gertrude Caroline Bailey, whose family came from Ballyartha, County Wicklow. Exactly nine months later, Gertrude gave birth to a son who, like his father, was named John. But then divine intervention struck, and just a fortnight after the child's birth, John Senior died at the age of 40. The widowed Gertrude married again, her second husband being Captain Francis Crofton, whose family lived elsewhere in the county at Moot Park. But then Gertrude also died, and at the age of 10, little Johnny Talbot was left an orphan. And in the next episode, I'll tell you what happened when he grew up and what became of the house that his father had been so determined to secure. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. Goodbye.